Hi, I'm Rob and today we're at the Golden Lion in Southwark. This is the Golden Lion, very historic pub, it's 16th century, Tudor building, but its biggest role in history was in the 20th century. In the days leading up to the invasion of Normandy, D-Day on the 6th of June 1944, the saloon bar of the Golden Lion in Southwark was taken over as an official officer's mess. In those days the present bar consisted of two rooms, the front being known as the Blue Room and the one at the rear the Gold Room. These were so named by the officers to reflect the colour of the decorations and furnishings. Some years on, the barmaid who served at the house in 1944 still resides in the village, as we have therefore heard confirmation that General Dwight D. Eisenhower drank half pints of bitter here, whilst General Sir Bernard Montgomery confined himself to grapefruit juice. The beer dispensed to the general was brewed in the brew house at the rear of this property, which we will look at later. Looking forward to visiting this pub, but the walk starts. I'm walking through the village to the church. If you notice, all but a couple of the houses in the village have got a burgundy coloured front door. And that's because the village is feudal. And what that means is it's uh, owned by one person, like a lord of the manor if you like. And it's present on all the houses, the burgundy doors, even the shop. This is the village church, it's called St James without the Priory, which means that it was outside the grounds of the Priory. It's a Grade 1 12th century church, and it's also fairly rare because it's a lay peculiar, and that means it's privately owned. Well, it's not open, we can't take a look inside, which is a shame. So we are carry on our walk towards the Red Lion. So this was the old village school, but it's now owned by a firm of accountants. Yeah, somebody's selling fresh veg. That's something very unusual now. We've got a phone box actually have a working phone in it. Since the advent of mobile phones, that is a very rare thing in Britain now. They're normally, I don't know, lending libraries or whatever. Don't get cobwebs in here though, I don't think they've used it that <laughs> recently. This is the Red Lion, just down the road from the Golden Lion. Now, when the estate was built, it was decided that the Golden Lion would be for the, the Toffs, the posh people, because it had a beer and spirits license. And the Red Lion was always for the estate workers, the working classes, because it just had a beer license. And we follow on around the bend. And you're probably better off on the pavement. Lovely herringbone brick pattern on that one. So we continue past Castle Farm Barn. Just as we're walking along here, I'll tell you how this uh, village came about to be feudal. Um, it was owned by the, the Priory, the 12th century Priory, and that had moved up from Porchester Castle. 
uh, was rebuilt here and they own the village. Of course 1539 came the dissolution of the monasteries, Henry VIII and all that, and uh, the village, everybody and everything in it, was um, granted to a chap named John White. And unusually, because most of the feudal villages have long since died out, this one carried on. So at the end of the estate wall for Southwark Park, we take the finger post path to the right into the woods. We've skirted the wall of the estate and the path turns left to take us into the woods. Southwark Manor House was built in 1813 but in 1838 it was destroyed by a large fire. 1841 it was rebuilt and then I lived happily there until the outset of World War II when it was uh, requisitioned by the government and was the base for Dwight Eisenhower the American general that planned Operation Overlord which was D-Day as we'll hear more about probably later in the pub. It then became HMS Dryad, a naval school and at the moment it's the Defence School of Policing and Guarding and there's also a Royal Military Police Museum in there. So a lovely quiet shady path through the woods and uh, over in the woods to the right and we are going up slightly uphill there is an old Ringham Bailey Castle uh, just look out for the finger posts to keep you on track. Don't confuse this with the usual Forestry Commission woods. This is a private wood, so you've got to keep to the path. As these fences and signs proclaim. Another one over there, look. So we come out of the woods into a field and over there on the top of Portsdown Hill you can see the radar installations at Kinetic and they develop all the electronic uh, weaponry and radars and things for the Navy. So we skirt the edge of the field and we've got a solar farm over there, which seems to be the way of things these days. And good, nice clean free energy. And we're turning right down this gravel track. And carry on through the solar farm and you pass this little farmhouse. Not sure if that's lived in anymore, don't think so. At this point we keep going left. So pass through Wanstead Farm. And they're busy getting in and hay at the moment. On this bend, it's not a stile, so you don't go straight forward. We carry straight on to the left. Come to a little lane. And we turn right. At the finger post, we are going to turn right down this lane past our bovine friends. Hmm. Uh, lovely oak trees spread about. Oh, Let's place that quiet fish. What's that? Don't go off this way to the left just after the river bridge. You carry straight on. There we are, back to the estate walls. And you just round the bend. And there's a finger post sign to the right. So a sheep running off. They were drinking there when I crossed over. Would have had a nice close picture, but there we go. Now this is part of the Pilgrim's Trail, which runs all the way from Winchester to uh, 
Mont Saint Michel in France. We just follow the path all along the estate wall. Uh, the other side of the wall, there's a, a lovely lake. Um, I went to Southwark House in the early 70s. It was my cousin's wedding. And I think his wife, uh, her father, was a naval officer. So the reception was in Southwark House under the big overlord map. And uh, yeah, you look down this lovely lake, it's beautiful in there. And soon the wall leads you out onto the main Wickham to Portsdown Hill Road, which indeed is a bypass that was built on land donated by the uh, Southwark Estate to bypass the village. When we get back to the roundabout, we follow the wall round to the right to follow the road back into Southwark. And on the approach to the village, we are turning right into Priory Road. Right opposite the D-Day Memorial Hall and the Brew House car park, there's a metal gate, you could miss it very easily. And this leads you down to the Priory. A fair old bit of weed on the lake. The old duck over there could probably walk across it. We come down that path and on the right this is what remains of Southwark Priory. And it's literally sat on Southwark Park Golf Course. Now, as I say, the Priory was uh, demolished in the dissolution of the monasteries. But it was a, a new priory in the 12th century when it was um, removed from Porchester Castle and brought here. In fact, some of the stonework you see, the stones are actually removed from the castle to build the new priory. And what you're actually seeing is um, the refectory wall for the priory and there's very little else that remains. Okay, we retrace our steps back and look at the brew house if it's open then back to the pub. And there's the D-Day Memorial Hall. And you can see just how important this uh, this village and Southwark Park was to the war effort. Everyone but everyone came here, Eisenhower, Montgomery, everybody. And there we are, lots to see around Southwark. So we're back at the pub, but we're also at the brew house. Boiler and a steam engine this way. And the shop sells all of the brews. This is a Victorian brewery. And the brewer for many years was a chap called Old Dick. And they've got wine, and wines, so they've got beer. And even a t-shirt with his face on. And you also find it on YouTube, my old Pathé newsreels. But this is the grist mill. And the hot liquor tank. And all the notices are self explanatory. I won't ruin the mood, I'll let you have a looky. That's the mash tun, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, 
Great Walk, historic village, lovely countryside around. Yeah, having a chat with the champion there. Well, that was both the best season in cold. And uh, well, please like and subscribe. But until then, let's go in and have a look at the pub. Cold. face in the corner. Well that is an excellent BLT and a half pint of copper. Following in the uh, footsteps of uh, Dwight Eisenhower going by the half pints. Here we are we're in the garden of the Golden Lion here in Southwark and we've got Greg who's the landlord. Hiya. Hello Greg. Hiya. And, and Greg what can you tell me about the the feudal sort of side of the village and the fact that the, the landowners own everything. Yeah, we're still a squiredom. Uh, I think it's one of the few in the country. So we've got Mark Thistlewhite, who owns this village and quite a bit of Hampshire, actually. Mm -hmm. He's the Lord Lieutenant of Hampshire this year. Oh, right. Um, so he's, he holds the Queen's, he's the Queen's representative, and he was for the Jubilee. And he is an, an absolute gent, and, and let's say we're a squiredom, and he runs the estate. So everything in the village is owned by him. There are very few freeholds, and, and I'll mention one of them in a minute. Mm -hmm. But uh, nearly everything else is rented, and everything has got a red door. Um, and that was something that the old lady, Borthwick Norton, uh, she changed the colour from green to this burgundy and cream because uh, she preferred the colours of that and, <laughs> and, and to have that much power. I'd like the houses to be, you know, burgundy and cream. It must have been a lovely, lovely way of doing it. So, yeah. um, and, but it's a lovely place to live. Um, for example, there's a chap down the road that sort of picks up litter. And for the time he spends in service, he gets money taken off his rent. Oh. So, uh, you know, so it... it promotes community yeah because some some people find it rude that one man owns quite so much yep but he is a benevolent if you had a bad squire i suppose it would be awful yeah but he's quite benevolent and and he understands people which is is something that i think is quite important in this this current time there is one white door in the village and that's where the vicar lives mm -hmm. um but the squire even owns the church so we're not under the bishops we yep. uh we're, we're, it's known as a peculiar. There's, there's, he's one of the few people that owns churches, and he owns two. He owns this one in Southwark Village and the one at Borrant as well, ah, right. uh, which is just up the road. Um, and they are both under him. And so his private um, vicar looks after both of those yeah. and also attends all his functions up in Hampshire. And I guess it helps as well in a nice village like this. You've actually got a working village because the cottage is a and lived in by the actual people that work the, the farms Quite and a things. few are still f tied, a lot of them aren't now, but he still chooses the demographic. So if you want to live here, you write to the estate mm -hmm. and say, can I come and live or work in your village? And he, he says, come in for an interview, and, and there's an interview panel, and, and it, it's marvellous. Oh, right. Um, Very unique way he, of life. It then. is, and he... There is a little bit of what I call nepotism. For example, if your grandfather worked for his grandfather, then you probably stand a little bit more chance of getting a house in the yeah. house. But he looks at everybody's merits, yeah. which is which is quite nice. Oh, I'm good. slightly different because I'm a, I'm a business, and the way the businesses are chosen are slightly different uh -huh. to the way that the, 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 the boys and girls that live in the houses. But he likes families, he wants children to be around because he wants his village to continue to have that, that sort of demographic spread, oh, which is absolutely excellent. clever. Yeah. That's excellent. So, we move on to the Second World War. And this pub, probably the saviour of the, the Western world, <laughs> explain to me why this was so important right. in the Second World War. Well, I think you've already been in the brew house. Mm -hmm. Now, the brew house was quite important because this pub never had to put up a sign, no beer till Friday, because the brewery kept on working and 
you, did you see the video of... No, the video oh, right. wasn't playing. Right, OK, really. I think you should have a look at that and maybe put a link to it as mm -hmm. well. Um, old Dick was the brewer here and he brewed all the way through the war and they, the villagers would get bits of furniture to burn to keep that boiler going so that he could keep brewing beer. So this pub never had to put up a sign, no beer till Friday, like a lot of pubs did, ah, right. because of the, uh, the the restraints on on, on goods and things. Yep. Um, whilst they, they came to this area to, to plan the D-Day and the big house was uh, taken away from the family, mm -hmm. it's, he'd like it back. Um, but of course it is still owned by the MOD and, and it's now the, the home of the Tri-Services Police. Yep. But the house was taken and the map is still on the wall up there if you can get to see it, which mm -hmm. is quite good. But I think you have to organise it if, you're, if, you're, if your customers, guests are yeah. looking for that sort of thing. They organise group tours. Um, but they obviously wanted somewhere to, to relax. And there were two pubs in the village, the Red Lion and the Golden Lion. Golden Lion had a spirits license, so we could serve gin, rum, brandy, whiskey. So the officers graduated to this pub, and people like myself, the cannon fodder, would have been down there drinking <laughs> the scrumpy. Um, and also, my pub splits nicely into two. I don't know if you've been in and walked yes, around yet. Yes. Yeah, it splits nicely into two. So. Um, my first, I've been here 15 years now, mm -hmm. and my first duty was to do the 100th birthday party for the barmaid that served. Uh -huh. And she said with great regret, she never saw the king here, and she never saw Mr. Churchill, but she did see Ike and Bradley, the Americans, Monty, um, Prince Philip, God bless him, his, his cousin Mountbatten, because they were serving naval officers yep. in Portsmouth, so they used to come up over the over the hill to, to see it again because it had beer and, and spirits. It was yep. kept well stocked. Oh, um, it, it was known as the Gold Room and the Blue Room and that was purely because of the furniture it had. It had Lloyd Loom, that basket weave furniture yep. and it came basically in two colours. One was a yellowy gold and one was a bluey turquoise. And <laughs> so there's no other relevance that we can see of blue, the Blue Room and the Gold Room. Obviously that furniture's long gone. Yeah. Um, but we tried to keep a feel of the pub. Um, I'm blessed that I'm an independent um, and I don't have a brewery above me, so I can choose the beers that I buy, yep. um, the way that my, my son's the head chef, and he's, I'm very proud of him, actually. He, does, <laughs> he cooks proper food. We don't do microwaving. He cooks everything. We oh, cook our good. own breads now and everything yep. like that. So, yeah, so this, during the, if these walls could talk, the stories they, they have could a tell. tell to yeah. tell. So what? moving on to modern times, so you get a lot of walkers. Loads. And I noticed you've got, had some camper vans in the car park there. So tell me a little bit about what you can do for walkers and, and campers and things like that. Right, there's some really, really lovely circular walks from the pub or from the car parks, because my, my pub car park backs onto the village car park. Yep. So there's always plenty of parking spaces. Um, and there was, I say, there's some lovely circular walks, some of them on the flat. But you can also walk up to Nelson's Column on the top of the hill. Yep. There's footpaths and then you can walk along the escarpment and then back down round, which again is a lovely one because the walk along the top of Ports Downhill with the, the Isle of Wight in the yeah, background the beautiful is the, one of the most Absolutely. amazing views in the, in, the, in, the, in the place. So you can all set that out from here. Um, I've little, Stupid little things, like I've got the toilets that are outside. So, you know, you can use the toilet facilities, yeah. which are a rarity in a lot of places now yeah, in, absolutely. Port, in Hampshire. They really are. Mm -hmm. The camper vans, that's an interesting thing. Um, it was part of my marketing strategy. We joined something called Brit Stops. Mm -hmm. Now, Brit Stops is, uh, you buy a book which costs you, I don't know, 20 quid, which is about one night in a campsite, mm -hmm. and you get 6,000 places the pubs mostly, car parks, that you can stay overnight as long as you use the pub facilities. Oh, right. So it's been an absolute bonus for me, especially being so close to the ferries to France and Spain. Yep. I get people that live Midlands or even further. They're on an early boat in the morning, so they'll drive down, park up the night before, maybe have dinner and a few last English beers before they go off to <laughs> foreign climbs and have to drink Euro Fizz and you know it's uh, so it works really really well and again because my toilets are outside and I've got the facilities for electric hookup and and wastewater then it, it works oh, really that's well. That's brilliant and last one for my dog walking friends is the pub dog friendly? Very dog friendly. Okay. Um, 
one of the first things my barmaid some, sometimes ignores the customers while she's fussing the dog <laughs> and making sure that if the if the owner's going to have a drink that the dog has a drink as well <laughs> especially in this hot weather yeah um, absolutely. it is too much yeah. i've got a lovely garden that we're sitting in at the moment which is a proper little oasis yeah and i keep it well shaded and nice and shaded yeah but yeah. Uh, we always look after our four-legged friends it's <laughs> not a problem at well all. that is brilliant thank you very much for that Greg. no it's <laughs>